If you have your Bibles, go to Hosea, chapter number two. We're cooking with gas, man. We're in the second chapter, third week in. Woo. I gotta slow down, man. <laughs> gotta get those dilithium crystals cooled cool down the Enterprise, man, so we can slow down. Man. It's way too fast, man. Hosea, chapter number two. What a book, man. <clears throat> what a book within the book. Yeah, be a Sunday school lesson. Go marry a harlot, man. Have some kids and be a good time. Yeah. Real quick, Brother Maines, your brother is going in for open heart surgery. You, I don't know if I put it on the prayer list for this month, but Garrett is going for open heart. When? Tuesday, correct? Tuesday, Wednesday. You remember that Garrett is lost. So, yes, I'd like his heart to get better, but I'd like to see him get saved. Uh, I need to think you die and go off to hell, but you know, I don't know how many chances the Lord gives me. I don't know. But pray for God's mercy and grace and skill given to the doctors. and Just to give him another chance, man. I don't want him to get healthy and then die and go to hell. I, wouldn't want my, I don't want my relatives to get over cancer and then go to hell. Man. I want them to get over whatever infirmity they are when I pray for them so they get saved, man. So, some, some crazy stuff. Oh, real quick, another service of message. I just like taking my glasses off because Brother Knox does it, so he's a cool guy. I just want, I want to be cool like Brother James. No, let's throw those away, man. Uh, I texted... You're going to freak out, Brother Bird, and I hate texting. You know I do. But uh, uh, Brother Dave Yoakum is doing better over the sepsis. Uh, he is going to have, have to have surgery on his, one of his kidneys. So, uh, but he's doing better. And he's like, oh, praise the Lord, man. I'm up on the bottom doing things. I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yoakum is Y. It's near the end of the judgment seat alphabet. <laughs> so we'll have plenty of time to go. Can I, can I want to get away? Seriously, man. But he says, oh, oh, everything's doing great. He got like kidneys, eyes, in a wheelchair. He's doing, oh. yeah, man. Amen. So keep praying for him if, if, if you could. Hosea 2 verse 1 says, say ye unto your brethren, am I? You notice he took the low off from chapter number 1. And to your sisters, Ruama, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot. She hath conceived them, uh, she that conceived them hath done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and mine drink. Thank you again, Father, for the night. Pray your blessing upon our time, please, again. Father, would you get the honor and glory and praise due to your holy name? Father, would Jesus Christ, the head of the church, get all the exaltation due unto him? And Father, may you help us again tonight in this hour, as, as you do so frequently and so often in times we don't even we're not even careful to thank you about, Father, the rescues you've performed, the blessings you've poured out, the dangers you've hit us from. Thank you, Father, that you do that, and we'd ask specifically for this time you'd meet with us. For the other preachers that are preaching right now that are preaching your book and love you and stand up for you, Father, would you give them unction from the Holy Ghost as well, use them to bring honor and glory to yourself. We thank you and praise you that one day this will all be over, and uh, Father, we'll be with you for all eternity. Help us to get some more in the boat before that time comes. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Kind of a weird way to start off chapter number two. He says, say unto your brethren, Ami, or am I, and your sisters, Ruami. Now, the context is kind of weird the way the phrase is written out. But he's, who's, let me just ask this. Okay, so we have Jezreel was the firstborn, right? We, we saw that. After that, who else is born? So you have Jezreel's a boy. We understand that in chapter number one. Who else have you got going on here? His name is really what? Law, and then Loru Ama, right? So two boys, one girl. So what happens in the context, not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not talking to you like you're idiots, but sometimes when you read, you're like, what is going on here? But he, he's calling out to the children he's had by this harlot that the children would turn around and plead with their mother. Now he says, say to your brethren, that's the boy talking to his brethren, and the girl to her sisters. I want to take a couple seconds and look at that for a minute. Go to Matthew chapter number 5. 
Matthew chapter number five. God is a husband to Israel. He is also their father. Now, you and I, as we've said a, a gazillion times, and we'll say it for the gazillion and first time tonight, you are not replacing Israel. You are the body of Christ. Neither Jew nor Gentile, you're permanently sealed into the day of redemption. You've been put into the body of Christ, with Jesus Christ as your head by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, that being said, Israel still is going to maintain the husbandry with God. God's going to get them back after the tribulation period. God is also their father from the sense of Exodus 4.22, right? My firstborn, my son, call him out of Egypt. So when you see this phrase, say to your brethren, he's saying to the boy, talk to your brethren. Talk to your fellow Israelites. And uh, 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 Ruama, what a great name. Ruama, you talk to your sisters and say, let's get together and go talk to mom. Uh, you're in a rough situation when your, your children rebuke you. I'm not saying they can't. I'm saying you're in a rough situation as a parent when your kids can turn around and legitimately rebuke you. And in this case, mom, uh, you need a way to put away... Now, imagine saying this to your mom. Put away your adulteries from between your breasts. <clears throat> Nobody speaks more literally and to the point than the God of the Bible. You don't need Richard Pryor or George Carlin or any of the other fools to get up there and make a mock at the language and everything. You can get really, really plain speech from a King James Bible without being filthy. Look what the Bible says to me in Matthew 5. Silas, you still saved? Here we go. Matthew 5, chapter 5, 13 through 16. You can smile. It's okay. You won't break into dust or anything. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> 13 through 16, if you could. Uh, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is the condensed force of the good enough. Mm-hmm. Saw that small brother Bert hit on that several times. Keep going. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and giveth it, giveth light unto all that are in the house. Mm. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify for Father. Glorify your Father. Any Christians around? Any save people around? Body of Christ around? What are you doing calling him your father? Because that's the national distinction that God has over the, over the whole nation of Israel, all 12 tribes. So when somebody tells you to pray the Lord's Prayer, go to Matthew 6, you know, oh, well, gee, aren't you talking to your heavenly father? Well, whoa, 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 hold on here. Hold on here. Get your bearings straight where you're at. Matthew 6. Still underneath the Old Testament, correct? No blood of the lamb shed, no death of the testator. Well, look how God lays this out for, for the, quote, and this is not the Lord's Prayer. Where, okay, quickly, where's the Lord's Prayer in the King James Bible? We preach through it. Remember that? Specifically. I know he's in the, the garden. I understand that's a good, that's a good shot. I'll give, you, I'll give you a B minus on that one. You get like a gold, platinum, copper star. <laughs> Go, but what, which one is, you guys, John it's John 17. If you want to really get how the Lord prays, oh, holy Father, righteous Father, you want to get into how the God of glory speaks to his heavenly Father, go to John 17, man. But look what happens here. Now, now, now take a look here. Brother, uh, Brother Maines, if you could pick it up, mm, 6, 1 through 4, just for the sake of where we're at, if you could. Matthew 6, 1 through 4. <clears throat> Not your own before men to be seen of them, otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do, mm. in the street, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their, they have their reward. For when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know mm. do it. Yep. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're good right there, but if you could, can you go down to 14 and 15? I mean, you could read the whole thing. I'm just not, for the sake of time, and, and uh, not having Brother Jonathan have an aneurysm because we read the whole chapter. So 14, that's a running joke now, Brother Maine said. He gets to read all the chapter. For if you not forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Do you get the context of Hosea now? I'm not trying to bunny trail 
excuse me, full-grown rabbit trail <laughs> off of Hosea 1. But I mean, you got to think, he's pleading to the kids and to the brothers of Israel and to the sisters of Israel, you need to go talk to your mom about what she's been doing to me. Uh, I'm doing this again, doctrinally speaking, because you know what? God is not done with the Jew. And when you read about the judgment coming in, in the tribulation period, which we saw a little bit and heard about in Sunday school, that God is using that as the time of Jacob's trouble, ultimately to do what? To get his children back, to get his wife back. Jehovah's going to get his wife back. She's put away now, Jeremiah 3 and a bunch of other verses. Uh, Isaiah 54, thine husband. God is the husband over Israel. Jesus Christ has the chaste virgin, that's the church. Then you have Satan has his bride, which is mystery Babylon. That's important because when you read stuff like this, it's like, I, I don't know how many times in jail I heard Matthew 6 quoted because nobody taught him. Our Father, which art in heaven. Okay, have you ever really looked at that? Now, I get it. You're, you know, you guys, you you're folks, you're advanced. You're walking upright. You're taking oxygen and nutrition. I get it, man. But you don't go to Matthew 6 to learn how to pray New Testament prayers, man. Because Israel is and are the sons and daughters of Almighty God. Go with me, Brother Justin, go over to uh, chapter 7. I'm not trying to belabor the point, but a bunch of verses there would be good for you to maybe track down about God being the father, not just the husband over Israel. 7 through 12, Brother Justin, if you could. Ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that seek that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Amen. For what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a serp a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Hmm. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, folks, is typically known as what, doctrinally? What would you, what would you call it? And I, I'm not the guy that invented this. It's come way down the road to me, man. But what would you typically call Matthew 5, 6, and 7 in the King James Bible? It's the constitution of the kingdom. You got your herald of the king, signs of the king, rejection of the king, constitution of the kingdom, the king in the kingdom, and all that. That's up until chapter number 13 where he walks out of the house. He says, that's it. You could, unpardonable sin in 12. I'm not walking out of the house. I'm going to go walk by the seaside. What a great picture of him starting to foreshadow the Gentiles, man. F phenomenal thing. But Brother Justin just read it. I always struggle with that ask. You know, getting them in order. Have you guys, could you guys quote that right now? Asking, you know. I'm like knocking. So the only, the only, and I learned, I'm trying to remember where I heard this, but ask is ask, seek, knock, A-S-K, and that's the order in that Bible. I never knew that. Little three-letter word stumped the big Bible genius. Yeah, you're real cool. You're a smart guy. Matthew 23, A-S-K, ask, seek, knock, and that's the order it's given to. Pretty neat, man. All right, Matthew 23, Brother Kenny. Kind of weaving our way back on the left-hand side here. 23, 1 through 9. I gave you more verses than anybody, so the tide check better be large this week, brother. <laughs> then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Mm. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not but do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. For they bid heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of, one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, mm -hmm. and enlarge their borders of their garments. And love the upper uppermost rooms and feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not called ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, mm -hmm. and all Amen. ye are brethren. See that? Am I and Laura brethren and sisters? Keep going. And call no 
me and your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. He still hasn't died yet. I refer to him and get to call him Heavenly Father because of Jesus Christ, my advocate, my mediator, my high priest. I'm in the family of God, John 1, 12, and Romans 8, and all those other verses. I'm in the family of God. He's my father now because of the regeneration, the baptizing of me into the body of Christ. These folks aren't like that, but yet they get to call him father. Now, how can God do that? How can he, how can he keep Jew, Gentile, and Church of God separate? But most preachers can't do that. They like to blend it all in and get the physical promises from Israel going into the Gentile church and, and, and the Christian and all that stuff. And you got to keep them separate, man. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy reading these verses and say, okay, that one fits there, but I get to call him Father. Uh, not Big Daddy or he's my, you know, he, uh, what's, what's the one I used to hear? The man upstairs. The, oh, the man upstairs. Well, you know, the, the big guy. The big guy. Man, I hope you get saved and repent of that. You'd hate to see the big guy on his great white throne, man. Yeah. Ooh, man, 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. <laughs> man. <laughs> this is wild. You should be familiar with your heavenly Father, but that familiarity where you lose the holiness of Almighty God, that scares the tar out of me. You start calling him like he's your pal and he's your buddy. That you, I'm not. I'm not talking about a close relationship with your father. I'm not. That's not. I'm not even intimating that at all. I'm saying, some of these people walk around and just refer to him like he's just a, he's a candy distributor. He works at carnival. He's giving out cotton candy. This is the God of glory that died for you, who's never sinned, and without the blood of His Son, you'd have nothing in common with Him. You'd be in hell. So you got to you got to be careful about that. You know that. You know that. That's my big daddy up there. I'm sorry. The the accent gave it away, but you know what I'm talking about. 2 Corinthians 6. Who's up? Let's go, Paulie. 14 through 18, please. Look how the Lord pulls this into a Pauline epistle. Be non unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Hmm. Doesn't that sound like Zechariah, uh, I mean, uh, Hosea 1? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now look at this. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my son and daughter, saith the Lord. <laughs> Did you see the transition there without God still losing his fatherhood over the nation of Israel? Now, when you... Brother Paul just read that whole section. That's probably the most famous verse or section of verses outside of Ephesians 5 maybe for godly separation of the New Testament Christian life. He says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What were they doing in Hosea and why was Hosea written? Who were they linking up with? Belial. Baal. The reprobate heathen, unbelieving Gentiles, taking their customs in and worshiping every gro under every grove and every tree, man. Now, that's New Testament Pauline epistle for you and I, and you can see the draw from Hosea. I wonder if, I wonder if God wrote this or if maybe some man had a hand in it. I don't think a man had any hand in it. All right, now we're going to have to do some reading. This is going to get wild. Go to Ezekiel 16. If I, if I lose you and, you and you and you wake up in 10 minutes, that'll be okay. But we, got, we have to read this. We have to read this. We could just read this and shut it down for the whole night. You know what I'm saying? This chapter is pretty much, quite bluntly, the summation of where you're at in Hosea, but he's going to throw Judah in the mix, okay? Now, in verses 2 through 5 of Hosea 2, there's the pleading from the children to their, their mom to stop committing adultery and stop chasing after everything that feeds you. 
Remember how it said that, you know, uh, the children are going to plead and, and, and mom, you need to stop committing harlotry and, and, and adultery and you need to stop playing the whore and all those things and stop chasing after those people that give you wine and oil and all that stuff? It's interesting, you always chase what fills your belly and lines your wallet. And that's what Israel did. And you soon forget the God that actually is the one behind all that, that allows you and gives you power to get wealth or allows you to have a job or whatever the case might be. But look, look at uh, Ezekiel 16. Um, let's do this. Mackenzie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over your mom for a minute. She's, uh, she's taking English classes, so she's just learning. I, I need Mackenzie. Can you do 16, 1 through 5? Hey, just bear with me. We'll, we'll, it'll go as quick as you guys can read. I'm serious, but this, it, this, this chapter is going to, if you could summarize Hosea 2 and, and, and the whole flavor of it, this is the chapter, man. Go ahead. Now, just before you think I'm off the rail and we're reading too much, what did he say back in Hosea chapter number two? Lest I visit you like when I took you out of the wilderness, like a, basically like a baby. Did you see that picture there? It's like a child left on its own in the wilderness. Not, not suppled, not salted, which is interesting. I don't, you know, I, don't, I don't like usually like ordering my babies with salt on them. But I mean, <laughs> but you... <laughs> That's, that's funny, man. But you know what I'm talking It's part of the whole home care remedy stuff. I'm like, I saw Taylor, I was like... <laughs> uh, you know, when you see the birth, you're like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, let's have a baby. And they're like... <laughs> <laughs> let's not. Let's not have another one. C-section, spinal, let's go. <laughs> that's wild stuff, man. But that's, um, that was a good illustration to get you where you're at. Now, is that when the Lord... The Lord, the Lord's giving you a picture. He says, you know, I found you like a, a baby in the wilderness. Nobody had swaddled you. Nobody had washed off the afterbirth. Nobody had cleaned you up. Nobody sucked the mucus out of your nose. Nobody had wiped out you. Nobody had done anything to you. Do you remember how I found you and how I birthed you? Do you remember how I've taken care of you from basically an abandoned baby on the side of the road in the middle of the wilderness? Do you remember what I've done for you and now you're going to go play the harlot? What a picture. I took you in. I made you my child. I wrapped you up. I swaddled you. I gave you commandments. I've done, I've done everything. I've fed you. I've, clo I've done everything for you. And now you're going to step out on me. Oh, okay. So Ezekiel 16 is a great match me for that. Okay. Mo, you ready to go? Six through, <laughs> six through 14. Yeah. I have caused you to multiply as the blood of the field, and thou hast increased and waxed and great, and thou art come to excellent waters, thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was a time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou became. I'm actually thinking about calling the 11 o'clock service the time of love. That's my new message. That's, that's the new me Next Sunday, the time of love. That's the message. I just, I'm overwhelmed right now. Go ahead. <laughs> Look at this. If you have a King James Bible, it's thoroughly. I'm just saying Brother Bird's going to hate me for that, but that's okay. That's okay, man. I thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's baby Dior, but badger, badger skin might be waterproof. I mean, you think about it, it might be waterproof. 
You might have enough smell to keep other animals away from your kid or something. I don't know. God's not stupid. Plus, he used badger skins, did he not, in the tabernacle? Mmm. Yeah. Man. Okay, now, doesn't that sound wonderful? It sounds like Ken and Estion's wedding day. <laughs> the gold around the neck, the jewel in the head, the, the whole nine. I mean, sashaying down. We were there, Kenny. I got the film, but I got it up here where it's never, never going away, man. But you, did you just read those verses of how great God has been as a father, as a husband to Israel? And now watch how in one verse... It goes off the rails. It's, it's horrific. Deb, can you pick up 15 through 24, please? For thou distrust in thine own beauty, and slays the harlot, because of thy renown, and pourest out thy fornication on every one of thy his it was. And of thy garments thou didst take, thou deckest thy high places with thy yeah. colors, and slays the harlot thereupon. The like thing shall not come. Two seconds, Deb, before you keep going. Did, did you just read what the Lord gave him besides clothing? What did in Hosea 2, what did the harlot woman that the two children to plead with about, what are the two children supposed to say? Stop chasing after the things that you think fed you. I fed you. But you took what I fed you, and you started offering it to other gods. You took what I provide you with, and you turned it over to idols. You took your clothes you took, uh, uh, that I gave you. To, you exalted yourself in beauty, and then you took the stuff I gave, and you made gods out of them. And now, I've got to deal with you about your skirts being up, and your fornications, and you go with anybody. Any, did, I mean, did you read that? Anybody you went with, they became yours. Talking about harlotry, man. Are you serious? Any guy she went by from a nation, a, a people, a tribe, a, a custom. Oh, yeah, come on in. <laughs> yeah, my husband's gone a while. Come on in. Man, keep on going. I'm glad we don't, I'm just saying we don't do that. As New Testament Christians, I'm glad we don't step out on the Lord. I'm just saying this is all good Old Testament symbology. It's not, uh, sim, it's symbology, whatever the word that is. Symbolism. It's not really real. It's not really real to us or anything. Go ahead, if you could, Deb. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, and thou hast borne unto me, and these, thou, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. This is of thy whoredom a small matter. But thou hast slain my children, and delivered them to cause and to pass through the fire for them. And in thy abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare, and wast polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass, all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, thee. Yeah. For thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place, hast made thee a high place in the street. Israel's wrecked. Now, I know we studied uh, back a few weeks ago that Jude, excuse me, Judah had not gone into idolatry. Remember we read further? And we read about Hezekiah and the rescue of God in 2 Kings 19, that God had rescued without hand, without a horseman, without battle, without anything. He sent the angel of the Lord through, remember, 185,000 in one night. And so Hezekiah and Judah at that time had not gone into apostasy, but they're going to. So now you're getting kind of the tail end where, yeah, God's done with the southern tribes too, man. particularly Judah, your treacherous sister. And I know Hosea is more towards the northern tribes, but it's a warning. The kids are supposed to warn their mom, you need to stop playing the harlot. 
the kids have to go and tell mom, would you stop showing off yourself to every green tree and every idol? Could you just stop, mom? And she wouldn't. Judah has still not gone yet, but they're unfortunately going to go because they picked up the habits from the, the, the ten northern tribes. Brother Bert, 35 to 43, please. Actually, uh, did I? Yeah, I did that wrong. 25 to 34. Thou hast built thy high place at every path of the way. Yeah. Thou hast made thy duty to be a port, and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, and multiplied thy borders. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and have increased thy borders to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines. Which are ashamed of thy wife. Okay, two seconds. Did you just read the end of that, Brother Bert? I know you kind of missed the comma a little bit, but read that. What, what, who did it say that was ashamed of Israel's lewdness? If you got the Philistines ashamed at the way you're acting, you're in a rough position. The Philistines look at you and go, wow, man, they are horrific. <laughs> Uncircumcised. They, they made golden hemorrhoids. And mice. And they look at Israel in this state and go, why don't you stop playing the whore? We've seen what your God can do for you. We've seen what the ark can do for you. Why would you chase these other gods that we'd, tur we'd turn up our nose at? They worship a fish god. And they look at Israel and go, you lewd woman. They're not in a good place, man. Hosea is not a Hosea is not a you know a, a my fair lady type of a musical man. It's a rough book, man. Like Lamentations, this it your Bible is a negative book. You know why? Because God details the horror of man's sin and rebellion against His word. But thank God for the redemption that He offers. That's why it's a black book, man. It's been black for years, then you can get any color you want now. Man, they probably got a rainbow one out there right now. So, gold my pink shirt would be a good match, man. Go ahead, as Brother Maines already pointed out and hurt me already. <laughs> man. Thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Couldst not be satisfied. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea. Oh, man. Not satisfied herewith. Oh, man. How weak is thine heart, said the Lord God, <laughs> seeing thou that doest all these things, oh, yeah. the work of an imperious, whorish woman. And that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and hast not been as a harlot, in that thou scornest hire. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. Man. They give gifts to all whores. <laughs> thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers, and hireth them, that they may come unto thee on every side for thy borders. And the contrary is in thee from other women in thy whoredoms, whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms. And in that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee, therefore thou art contrary. We're not, we're not going to go back to Hosea right now, but when you get further down in the chapter, she is at such a horrible place. And you know what? She understands that God has said, that's enough. I've had enough. I've had enough, man. Israel chases after her lovers, and her lovers want nothing to do with her. What does that tell you about the sin you and I play with? It always takes you down a road that you think is pleasant at the beginning, but it ends up ruining your heart and your mind and your memory and your bitterness and everything. And it just, it's, sin never leaves you better. Ever. Well, I'll go, I'll go back to that same sin. It'll be, no, no, no. People say, I do believe there's gateway sins. There sure are. There's gateway drugs. Sure there are. Because you can't be satiated like Israel couldn't. I'll go try Egypt. Well, she doesn't work. Let me go try Assyria. Well, she doesn't work. And the Philistines are going, what are you guys doing, man? Well, well, well maybe, we'll, maybe we'll get a turn. I don't know. I mean, 
this is phenomenal. What's sad is New Testament saved people act like this, but we're eternally secure. Uh, I, you've heard me say it a million times, man. I'm going to say it again. I've committed more sin as a saved man than I have as a lost man. That's not funny. For a second, it's not funny. I've been, I was saved at 17 years old, man. I'm 56. That's 39 years of being saved. There's no excuse. And it never... See, you, some of you folks, you've been saved here a long time, man. You can't tell me you have not spent more time <laughs> saved than you have. You have spent more time saved than lost. And you think some of the craziness you've done as a saved person. Yeah. And it never leaves you better than if you just avoided it altogether. Israel would have been better off never chasing those lovers, never going after Assyria, never going after Egypt, never going. They would have been so much better and so much, so much in a better state with their father and their husband. But now God's got to bring the judgment because sin requires judgment. All right, who we uh, J Brother Jonathan, can you get uh, 35 to 43, please? Yes, we are reading the whole chapter. You are not reading the whole chapter, <laughs> but we are, we are going to read the whole chapter. Uh, I, I know. You're like, yeah, man. Well, I mean, hey, like Wednesday, you can just look it up on Jen's phone. <laughs> 35. We got cheating. I'm just, Brother Darren, a lot of things have gone bad around here since you left. I'm just want to let you know. 30, 35 to 43, please, Jonathan. <laughs> Therefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness was covered through, through thy whores, with thy lovers, and with all the idols of thy abominations, and by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore I will gather all thy lovers, with whom thou hast taken them, and all them that, that thou hast loved, with all them that thou hast hated. I will even gather them round about against thee. And will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. And I will give thee blood and fury. Real quick, just to just to maybe get your Bible minds thinking, which I I hope they do. Wasn't there a woman taken in adultery, brought in the very act to Jesus Christ, while he came down from the Mount of Olives, the second coming, and was in the temple? When is Jehovah going to get back his bride? That, that account of the woman taking adultery without the man being around, I know there's a lot of wonderful personifications and wonderful, there is, but you've got to think doctrinally about that. That's second coming with the whorish woman being restored. Go and what? Sin no more. I'm on the throne now. There's a lot more to that thing. Because then after he leaves the woman, she leaves him, what do they start ragging on? Who is your father? We be not born of fornication. Oh, really? You weren't born that way, but you sure like it, don't you, Israel? Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on, man. We can't get into all that tonight. I don't want to do that, but just something for you to think about with John 8. Go ahead, Brother Jonathan. And I will also give thee into their hand, and they shall throw down thy heavenly place, and shall break down thy high <coughs> they shall strip. They shall strip thee also of thy clothes, and shall take thy fair jewels, and leave thee naked and bare. They shall also bring up a company against thee, and they shall stone thee with stones, and thrust thee through thy And they shall burn thine house with fire, In the sight of many women, and I will I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot, and thou also shalt give no iron anymore. So will I make my fury toward thee to rest, and my jealousy shall depart from thee, and I will be quiet, and will be no more angry, because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, but hast fretted me in all these things. Behold, therefore I will I also will recompense thy way upon thy hand, saith the Lord God. I wonder if I've ever fretted my heavenly father. If he looks down and goes, what are you doing again? Yeah. Jennifer, 44, if you could, to 54. Uh, 
Oh, man. I love him. And my younger sister, that's well above my rights, is smiling at her daughters. Yet that's on that walk after their ways, nor done after their abominations. Yet they are but as if that were a very little thing, thou wast corrupt me more than they in all thy ways. As I live, saith the Lord God, thou and my sister hast not done, she nor her daughters as thou hast done, thou and my daughters. Wow. Because wow. Wow. All right, Taylor, finish it up, please, if you could. When thy sister Sodom and her daughters shall return to their former estate, and Samaria and her daughters shall return to their former estate, then thou and thy daughters shall return to your former estate. <laughs> For thy sister Sodom was not mentioned by thy mouth in the day of thy time, before thy wickedness was discovered, as at the time, as at the time of thy reproach of the daughters of Syria, and all that are round about her, the daughters of the Philistines, which despise thee round about. Thou hast borne thy lewdness and thy abominations, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, I will even deal with thee as thou hast done, which hast despised the oath in breaking the covenant. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth, and I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. Then thou shalt remember thy ways and be ashamed, when thou shalt receive thy sisters, thine elder and thy younger. And I will give them unto thee for thy daughters, but not by thy covenant. And I will establish my covenant with thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, that thou mayest remember and be confounded, and never open thy mouth any more because of thy shame, when I am pacified toward thee for all that thou hast done, saith the Lord. God. That was a lot of reading. You can check that off. Your day's reading is done today, man. Uh, there's, certain, there's certain chapters, man, that are long. That, that, that's one of them, man. Uh, numbers six or seven's got like 82 or 83 in it. There's Psalm 119, obviously. I'll have to preach for that through that someday. But uh, uh, that's a, I mean, you read through all that, you just, you, it, this is the layout with Jerusalem now included. Did you see at the end where he starts bringing in the sisters? And who is he using as one of the children to address the mother? Loruama. Or Ruhama, the daughter with your sisters, talk to your mom about the harlot she, she's committing. Go back to Hosea. I've got a few more verses and we'll, we'll wrap it up. Hosea, that was a lot of reading right there. Kenny, you got phylacteries right right off the bat. I have to give you credit. I know you all noticed that. So hopefully you get a thumbs up for that on your, on your little YouTube page. But, uh, you know. You should make a phylactery cupcake in honor of this. You know, you can wear it around your wrist. You know, the bigger it is, the more spiritual you are. That's Bible, man, seriously. But praise the Lord, man. All right, Hosea chapter number two. Let, 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 me, let me do this here. Uh, verse number five, the Bible says this. For their, this is big. We're getting to a paragraph marker tonight. This is huge, man. For their mother hath played the harlot. She hath conceived, uh, she that conceived them hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool, and my flax, mine oil, my drink. We saw that already in uh, uh, Ezekiel 16 about how God's the one that did that for Israel. But I want, want to run some verses by you about serving whatever fills your belly and lines your wallet. Go to Isaiah chapter number 2. Isaiah 2. Give me, uh, I need about 10 minutes and we'll, we'll get through this. Isaiah chapter number 2, please. Isaiah 2, 
take a look at some, uh, in particular, Old Testament scriptures that have to do with people that want to worship the works of their hands and want to burn incense to their net and their drag and think that that's what gives them wealth and that's what gives them, you know, well, my, my boss pays my paycheck. My company does. I, I know that from a practical standpoint. I'm not stupid. But the reality is God gives you eyesight, God, God gives you strength in your body, God gives you mental faculties and abilities, God gives you tools, God gives you a vehicle. God is the one that gives you any ability and all ability to go make a living. I do understand my paycheck comes from a big monster aerospace company. I understand that. But the reality is he's the one that gives me the ability to show up for work every day. And without that, there's no paycheck. I don't care who's signing the paycheck. God is the one behind everything in your life and my life. But what happens is Israel thinks, well, uh, well, well, the Assyrians gave me fish. And, uh, well, well, we have really good success down in Jordan. You know, we get our clothes from over there and our, and our, and our wool and our flax over there. And the Lord's like, I'm the one that gave you all that stuff. Did you forget that? Do you, you're loving the things that give you what you think you're getting from them and not from the one who's providing it to you? Did you forget me? You, you did. You forgot your maker. Haley, go over me to Isaiah 2, 6 through 9, please. Okay, why did God forsake them? Because they're replenished where? From the east. And our soothsayers like the Philistines. And they please themselves in the children. You, you forgot that I'm the one that gives you everything. The gas in your car. The food in your refrigerator. I give that to you. What happens is, you, as I said a few weeks ago, and probably one of the Sunday morning things, uh, Sunday morning services, um, where I didn't ask God to take away his sin or anything like that. I loathe you, Bert. But uh, I didn't, that's not love. Get that right, that's loathe. But uh, I said that you get forgetful. It leads to unthankfulness. And vice versa. They go together, man. Forgetfulness and unthankfulness, unthankfulness for forgetfulness. You forget to thank God for the breath you have. Now, Brother Maines is here, and I, was, I would say this if he wasn't here, because you know we mock him regularly when he's not around. But you know what? I've noticed Brother Maines is praise over his water before he drinks it. Before you laugh, think about that for a minute. What happens if you didn't have the ability to swallow water on your own? What happens if there's some chemical in that water that reacted bad and you're about to get poisoned? I'm, I'm dead serious, man. I've been praying over my spikes, and if you ought to pray over anything, <laughs> if you, ought, you ought to pray over spikes, man. It's God's drink with Mountain Dew at the, at the, at the marriage supper. Don't, don't tell me it's not, man. I'm just saying that you you got, you got to be careful about that. You start getting unthankful. That, you know, well, oh, look at this. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. Look at this great kingdom I made. Look at, look, look at these palaces. Man. You didn't get any of that. I gave it to you. Go on, Haley. Seven, eight, nine, please. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> now the mean man's not me, Haley. I know you're thinking that. But do you, do you, do you know? Do you know? Uh, now I have to explain. It. Now uh, I, I, he's not here either, but. He's, his ghost is looking around, but Herb, Herb read that one time. This is years ago, and he's like, he gave me the, you know, you don't know if Herb is puzzled. <laughs> he forgot to breathe. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. So he, he looks, he read the verse, I had him read a verse, and it had mean men, and he's like, <laughs> you know, I, in math, in mathematics, how do you figure out, what do you have in mathematics? You have mode, right? Go ahead. What's the mean, typically? Bible definition. Because just like we think the word mad means you're angry. No, the English definition of mad is you're, you're, cra you're, you're, go you're lunatic. You're, 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 yeah, man. A mean man is just a common, ordinary, base, average man. That, that plays out throughout all your Bible. I just want to show that to you. So that, uh, and it, it's, in the, it's in the passage because what else do you have there? You have the mean, well, I shouldn't have said that. You have the mean man bowed down and who? The great man, there you go, Bible definition. But you know what's interesting? When you go out 
and you read this, when you go out and chase other idols because you think they're the ones that feed you, I mean, excuse me, you chase other uh, 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 sources and think those sources are what supplies you, what do you end up taking into your life? Idols. Because what comes along with all the stuff that fills your belly and lines your wallet, there's an idol behind that. And you start adopting their idols. That's what Israel, that's what they're doing in Hosea, man. That's what they've been doing throughout the book of Kings, Chronicles. Karen, uh, while you're right here, Isaiah 17, 6 through 8, please. Isaiah 17, 6 through 8. Look at this. He shall not look to the altar, the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. You're good. You were anticipating right there. You didn't see, yeah, I know you're right. It's like when you see the question mark and you know, but you haven't read it with the inflection. You're like, and eh? Because you got to get, get the question right. Haley, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's the famous Haley Brown. Yeah. It's a lot. I'm just saying it's a lot. Have you no, now, as you see a few of these, we'll, re, we'll read a few more. Have you noticed what's the common thread in these last couple? The work of what? How were you saved? How was the spiritual circumcision conducted? How was the stone out of the mountain cut in Daniel 2? You get man's hands in it. It's a disaster. If you acknowledge that man did it and not the God behind the man, you're in trouble. I mean, Matthew 24, don't the boys go out and say, Lord, look at these great buildings. Look at, all, look, look at this. I'm telling you, there's not one stone left upon another. He just ruined the whole party, man. He's ta- Jesus would not be a good real estate agent. He takes through and says, oh, yeah, no, look at all the... Yeah, but this one, yeah, that's going to be wrecked. Oh, that one's going to be on fire. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> it's going to be split in half by a great earthquake. But if you'd like to move into the neighborhood, we have great schools. It's just not going to work. What I'm saying to you is that we focus on the work of men's hands. Israel did that. And we tend to forget the God behind all of it. It's, yeah, folks, I have not attained to this at all. You forget that God gives you your food, your drink, your breath, your eyes. Your, you forget it. And before you know it, you forget so much, you become unthankful. And then before you know it, there's an idol attached to that. Oh, I wouldn't have idols and gods. Oh, come on, man. We just don't have the ones we look at and go, Buddha, Muhammad, Mary on the half shell. We got, we've got idols, man. Well, it's, it starts from being unthankful and you don't recognize who gives you everything. Who's the supplier of all, all, all the stuff in your life? Um, let's do this. Go to Isaiah, Jeremiah. I'm sorry, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1. Back to the front row. Jeremiah chapter 1. Silas, I need you to get verses 11 through 16. Jeremiah 1, 11 through 16, if you could. Yeah. Who have forsaken me, and have burned in burned incense unto other gods, and worship the works of their own hands. Chapter two, Brother Maines, twenty through thirty. Chapter two of the same book, twenty through thirty, Brother Darren. 
For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidst, I will not transgress. <laughs> On every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest plain the harlot. Bingo. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Man. <clears throat> For though thou walk thee with neither and take thee much so, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. How canst thou say, say I am not polluted, I am not one after Balaam? See thy way in the valley, know what thou hast done, for thou thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. A wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth up with the wind up the wind at her pleasure, <clears throat> in her occasion who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they shall they shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst. But thou saidest, There is no hope, no, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. Yeah. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, saying to his stock, Thou art my father, and to the stone, thou hast brought me, brought me forth. They have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they, they will say, Arise and save us. <laughs> but, where are the gods that, but where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise, that they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are, the, are thy gods, O Judah. Man. Wherefore will you plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Bingo. Your own sword. Devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. <laughs> You've raised up a stock and, uh, you know, hey, you know what? Hey, when you're in trouble, you're going to call to me, the true and living God, right? Arise, save me. And God's going to go, why don't you talk to that rock over there? Why don't you go over to that totem pole that you, that you love so much when you're making it with your own hands? Why don't you go over to that stock you're worshiping? I mean, you want salvation, right? Well, why don't you go to the ones that can save you, right? That's why you built them, because you were... You are unsatisfied, you harlot, with me. Brother Bert read, they were insatiable. They could not be satisfied with their God. They had to go find something else, some weird, and, and worship it thinking that could replace God, and then they get in trouble, and they're going to cry at him, and God's going to say, uh, go, go talk to the tiki torch. Go... You, 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 I know we. I know we're laughing because it's kind of. It's a little uncomfortable because you know what we play the same thing. And I know we're. Ne I understand we're not. We don't. Never going to be severed from him. We're never. I, I understand that. But that fellowship, man. When you chase after other gods, God gets a little cold and says, "Well, why don't we? Why don't we have a little bit of uh, getting that thing right time? A little reproof and correction, and then we can open up the channels where it's a little more clean between you and I." Because right now you've worshipped everything under the sun and now you're coming to me to say now you're in trouble and you want my help. I think of Proverbs 1 right off the heart. Oh, you're going to call on me to the day of your destruction? You're going to call me? I will laugh at you. I will not answer you. But if I do answer you, I'm going to answer you according to the idols in your heart. You love those gods so much? Well, I'm going to give you an answer through those gods that you built up in your heart against me. It's rough. Well, that's, that's Israel, preacher. I don't know. That's Israel. Yeah. That's a New Testament child of God that's out of fellowship with their father. Through chasing everything this world has to offer and the works of men's hands and worshiping the stock and the, and the net and all that. It's just weird, man. I, I, I know, man. It's, it's, it's a, not a pleasant subject, man. I thought it was just going to be good looking at Israel. Well, there's personal application to it. Jeremiah 22, please. Jeremiah 22. Brother Justin, can you get Jeremiah 22? We've got one, two, three. Yeah, got, uh, I don't want to give you the exact number yet. I want to do the work of men's hands and keep you mystified. Jeremiah 22. 20 through 22, please. Justin. Go up to Lebanon and cry, and lift up thy voice in Bashan, and cry from the passages. For all thy lovers are destroyed. <laughs> thy spake unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou saidest, I will not hear. Wow. This hath been thy manner from thy from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. Wow. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then shalt thou be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir? Yeah, that's it. You're, that's perfect, man. He threw me off. I was getting ready to come. Then I heard the right on. And I'm like, I'm like kind of scared. I thought it was the second coming. We missed the rapture. And we're in the, I thought we were done, man. 
I got to regroup, man. More sure word of prophecy. There we go. Amen. We're back. We're back, man. I'm just saying, what you, did, you, did you read that? Lovers have gone far away, man. And what's he saying, Jose? Oh, I'll go pursue my love. Oh, sure. Hey, I have pleasured them and they've pleasured me. Surely they'll take me back when I'm in trouble, won't they? No, harlot. They won't. They used you and threw you away. And you're going to go back to them? They don't want you. There's only one that wanted you. The one that took you out of the wilderness like a baby and cleaned you up and washed all the afterbirth off you. And the one that took you and clothed you and fed you and led you out of captivity and gave you the promises and the covenants and the prophets. And I'm the one that is your God and your husband and your father. Why would you step out on me? You've never met a God like me. But now you're going to go make some with your own hands and worship them? Well, I'm going to chase them far away from you. And you're going to chase after them and they're not going to be there. What a situation, man, Hosea turns out to be. All right, I need 44, 15 to 19. Brother Kenny, Jeremiah 44, 15 to 19. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood yep. by, the great multitude, even all the people that dwelt, in the land of Egypt, and Pharos, uh, Pathros, Pathros mm -hmm. answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the cities of Jerusalem, for yep. then we have plenty of victuals, and we were well and saw no evil. <laughs> Are you honestly, I'll kidding, so I'm not trying to belabor the point. Do you see what they're saying here? We didn't have any trouble. We didn't see any evil. We're worshiping false gods, and it's going great. We're, we're, we're sending up cakes to the queen of heaven. Our wives are telling us what to do. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. The men are answering Jeremiah. We know our women what they're doing. We're, we're down with it. You know what? As long as they keep baking cakes to the... As long as they keep baking... <laughs> this is such a prophecy right now. As long as, you, as long as you keep baking cakes to the queen of heaven and all that stuff, we've never had a rough time with her. But you put us through trial and tribulation. I mean, we, well, well, God, you know what? We'd just rather keep burning incense to her. We didn't see any evil. Plenty of, plenty of victuals. Verse 18, Brother Kenny. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out our drink offering unto her, Look at this. we have wanted all things and have been consumed <laughs> by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out our drink offering unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and to pour out Drink offerings under her without our men. Uh, we can't, you, you can't even not get close to going through this. But one thing that popped out to me in reading that through again, Numbers 11. What was num what's in Numbers 11? Leeks, cucumbers, garlic. Didn't, didn't we have it so much better when we were back in Egypt? It was a mixed multitude, M-I-X-T, the way God uses it in the King James. Wasn't it better when we were there? I mean, we had all this wonderful food to eat, and now look, we're on the wilderness. This place is horrible. That's Jeremiah. This thing's been going on for centuries, and God's watched this, and he's been so long-suffering and merciful and kind and forgiving and restoring. And at some point in time, God says, you know what? Now, you know what? There's going to be a time on earth that nobody's ever seen before, and I'll get you back through that, the time of Jacob's trouble. Because you chase other gods. Yes, sir? You have a... He's doing it to him. Yeah. You read a few verses earlier. He was trying to correct them in correction. They didn't want it. They were so far down the road with their idols and their, all that stuff. Whatever lines my wallet and feeds my belly and fills, my, fills up my fridge, I don't, you know what? God, yeah, that's cool. 
And then God corrects you and you get mad at him. And I had a, I've had it so much better. I didn't have that chastisement thing. And I didn't have that tribulation thing. I didn't have that, but that problem that I had serving you. But I've had nothing but, I've had an easy street. I'm moving on up to the east side, to the deluxe apartments and the sky high high. Because those gods don't treat me wrong, but you treat me wrong. No, you don't understand his corrections for your, they'll never correct you because they hate you. They're using you. All right, Habakkuk 1. Habakkuk 1. I did say three, but potentially, you know, Habakkuk chapter one. If we didn't have to read that whole chapter, Pastor, we wouldn't have to do this. We had to read that stupid whole chapter. And that's to repent and get right. Habakkuk one. <laughs> uh, Habakkuk one. Where are we at, Brother Paul? If you could get, uh, just for the, all, all kidding aside, uh, you got to read 12 to 17. I was going to try to cut it short, but. I, I get hit with the Jonathan Whirlpool. You got to read it all, man. You got to read it all, kid. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, my holy one? We shall not die. Sounds like what somebody said in the garden, huh? Mm -hmm. Thou hast ordained them for judgment, and, and O mighty God, thou hast established them. For there you go. Mm -hmm. As the creeping things that have no ruler over them, they have, take up all of them with the ang uh, angle, and catch them in their net, and gather them in their drag. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Look at this. Therefore they sacrifice them for their net, and burn into them <laughs> their bread, because by them their portion is fat, and their meat plenty. So they therefore empty their net, and thus... Oh, I caught some fish today. You know what? We've got some stripers, or if we're in Boston, stripers. And you get and we got some largemouth. You know what? Let's let's offer sacrifice to our Zebco rod and reel, open face or closed. Let's go. You, we laugh, but oh, I just cast a seine net out. I held it in my teeth and I threw it out with the weights, and I got 30 or 40 mullet. And you know what? The net did it. Let me make an offering to the net. You say that's crazy. Oh, man, you sacrifice all kinds of stuff to things that are not God. Last one. See, I told you we were getting the last one. Hosea 4. Mo, Hosea, I'm sorry, Melissa. Her mom actually asked her, why does he call you Mo? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, but it kind of is the new name in glory. It's a new name written down. That's it. The velour, the velour suit and the WB frog. It's over, man. So here we go. Hosea 4, 12 through 14, please, Melissa. Let's worship an oak, a poplar, and elm because we get nice shade from it. It's 90 degrees out. Hey, tree, you gave me some good shade. Let's set up an altar. You read that stuff and go, what are they doing? And then I go, what am I doing? What God are you chasing that could possibly replace your heavenly father? Am I? Ruama, why don't you go talk? to your brothers and sisters in Israel. Why don't you plead with them so we can all go to our mom and say, stop playing the harlot, because it never ends well. Brother Kenny, pray for us tonight, would you? And we'll shut her down. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. I just thank you for the practical application to us at this church age, but also looking back on yeah. what we read in Hosea. 
how we just fits line upon line, um, how we can have an idea of our, our own selves. <coughs> I just pray that we would not be unthankful for the things you do for us during the week and the things that you do for us as we wake up in the morning. Amen. As we put, you know, two feet down and breathe your air. I just thank you for it. I was saying the other night um, that I was, I'm just so thankful to have a beautiful house to be in and roof and shelter and heat and running water. Amen. And a place to go to that. Amen. I'm just very thankful for it. How you have blessed just my own my own life with those things. I understand the physical, but also the spiritual things like like just reading your word and you know, never gets old and I just thank you for it and that I know it will never get old because your book is a living book and your Amen. son is still living and you did rise the third day and that's amazing and that's word and I thank you for this church that we can come to and rise and divide and, and just have a good time around your word I just pray for the week coming up and put someone in our path that Amen. we can minister to and give the gospel to and um, I pray for a brother uh, Darren's brother and yeah, going amen. through heart surgery that you get the preeminence on everything that you show those doctors what to to do and be successful through it and Darren or somebody uh, would get the opportunity to glorify God in the whole ordeal and that your gospel can be preached to him. Yeah, amen. And I know you can do it because Amen.